Hi there, good afternoon. Welcome to Sydney, the largest city in Australia. This is just my second full day here in Australia, so uh, I am a newbie, still getting the lay of the land. Here we have the iconic Sydney Opera House, built from 1959 to 1973. Definitely one of the uh, most famous sites and images of Australia. Maybe tied with Uluru, Ayers Rock, of course, in the interior of Australia. And here we have the Sydney Harbour Bridge, built from 1923 to 1932, crossing over, of course, Sydney Harbour. Quite a sight. You can see a Ferris wheel out there. Looks like a whole amusement park. I'm not exactly sure what that is. And from there, you can catch a ferry over to Manly, which is the plan for today. Let's see when uh, the ferries are running. But first, before I head over there, I need to correct the record. I need to fix a mistake that I made in a previous video. But first, I have to find out if the mistake was made by me or the city of Sydney. Now, I think it's uh, likely to say that uh, probably the mistake was mine, but uh, I want to confirm first. So I'm going to walk up the street over here and tell you what I'm talking about. So I am not at the site of the mistake yet. While walking there, I came across a very interesting set of ruins. It's hard to read, but Stone Haven, May 1926. I'm assuming it must be the remains of a church here, 1924, YWCA, Young Women's Christian Association. These sure look more than a century old. So I don't know the story here, but uh, a bit unexpected to come across this. Just uh, walking from the Opera House right over there. Again, 1924. So this is pretty hilarious. King Edward VI, 1901 to 1910. Edward VI, 12th October, 1537 to 6 July, 1553, was King of England and Ireland from 28th January, 1547 until his death in 1553. He was crowned on 20th February, 1547 at the age of nine. Edward was the son of Henry VIII and Jane Seymour and the first English monarch to be raised as a Protestant. So, it is actually shared responsibility. That does not say King Edward VI. You can barely see, but it actually says King Edward VII, 1901 to 1910. So, in my first video, I walked up here, walked past it, looked like it said King Edward VI, and so that's what I said, and then a viewer who was very informed about uh, British royalty because he's from England, corrected me, and so I had to come back and see what was going on with that because King Edward VII, 1901 to 1910, but it is just that the uh, 
other number has faded away along with also the uh, left edge of the K there. So there we go. Mystery solved. Let's get down to the Manly Ferry. So I thought that I would address an issue that people often bring up when it comes to traveling, especially as a long-term traveler, which is laundry. How do I get my laundry done? So there's no uh, simple answer to that. It just kind of depends on where I am and what's available. But uh, fortunately, the hotel where I'm staying has laundry machines and they are free. And so that was great. Last night I did a load of laundry. That was the first proper load of laundry that I've done on this trip. I had been traveling for three and a half months, but uh, it's not quite as bad as it sounds because along the way I've done laundry myself, washing stuff in the uh, sink or the uh, shower, and that is actually a great tip, which is wash your laundry in the shower. You already have like lots of water running, soap dripping down. It's easier than uh, doing it in the uh, sink, especially, you know, hotels that might have small little sinks and low water flow or whatever. And so uh, I've been, you know, washing the essentials every once in a while as needed. But uh, this pair of pants hadn't been washed the entire time on this trip, so it was definitely time. But it just depends a lot on where you are. In India, for example, you might want to take your stuff to a uh, dobi wala, which is somebody who washes clothes for a living, leave it with them, and uh, then come back and pick it up the next day, or find a self-service laundromat in a town or whatever. Okay, wharf two, Manly Fast Ferry. Depart side A. Where do I buy a ticket? Howdy. Okay, that was lucky. It's just leaving. So this is not Manly Beach right here, but it is a short walk that way. I'm going to walk over there. So the uh, ferry, I think was $10 Australian. I wasn't sure how to book a ticket there. And so there were some attendants standing there and they were able to charge my credit card, even though I don't have a contactless credit card that I can tap. It is old school style, you have to insert which uh, doesn't work on the buses 
and various other uh, places around here, but fortunately I could use my credit card. So I think that it was 10 bucks, which is $6.50 US. And I was just lucky with the uh, timing to uh, catch it just a couple of minutes before it was leaving. So we are here in the Manly area and it sounds like it is basically a nice place to come to walk around, go for a run, jump in the water, surf, shop, dine, etc. the usual stuff. Luckily, there is one really cool thing that I'm looking forward to seeing. I will walk over there from here, but first I wanted to read something that sort of captures the Australian experience and some Australian slang. So this is from a website called Time Out. What's Manly known for? Just how many beaches are too manly for one suburb to have? Well, Manly has eight, which explains why water defines pretty much every aspect of life in this desirable suburb on the northern beaches of Sydney. People come here for surfing, sunshine, skateboarding, swimming, snorkeling, kayaking, hiking, and beach volleyball. Why do locals love it? You live in Manly for the lifestyle. It's the kind of place where your mom, or as we say in America, mom, always had beach towels in the boot. So the boot is the trunk of the car, as we say in American English. So you could meet her for a swim after school during summer and your weekends consisted of nippers in the morning. <laughs> I guess a nipper is a swim. Followed by a pink iced donut from the local bakery, says Alice Donaldson, who grew up in Manly. Once she got older, it was all about waterfront drinks at the office, in parentheses, where locals gather on a Sunday to sink beers on the grassy verge overlooking the harbor. So I guess the office is a park or some grass somewhere where you can look out of the beach. So anyways, uh, let's get walking. We will walk along the beach, see the uh, restaurants and various buildings along the way, and get to the wormhole. It looks really cool. So. Uh, Let's go for a wander, maybe not a nipper, not in a swimming kind of a mood, but uh, the water does look very nice. So if you're wondering about the season, today is March 22nd. Autumn has begun here down under. The temperature is 76 degrees Fahrenheit. That is 24 degrees Celsius, so it is very pleasant. Apparently the weather shifted just a couple of days ago, right before I arrived. It was super sunny and hot, and then this is only my second full day in Australia, and it's been cloudy the whole time, so uh, autumn has arrived. So here at the Manly Fish Market, fish and chips is $21.90 Australian. That is $15 US. If you saw my last video, you may have noticed that I paid $35 Australian for fish and chips. But of course, you pay more for atmosphere. That place right there didn't look as great for taking a seat and relaxing with a beer for a while. So uh, that at least gives you a little idea of the range of prices. 15 bucks for fish and chips is not bad, but it depends where you go and what sort of an experience you're gonna have. So from here, as you can see, there we are, Australia, New Zealand. Looking straight across at New Zealand, across the Tasman Sea, a long swim away. And so this is Manly Beach. And out there is the wormhole. Let's go find it. Two kilometers, a 25 minute walk. A nice pedestrian area there where you can walk barefoot if you want. I mean, this is the beach area, so 
you can probably walk around in a bikini. Obviously, you can on the beach. Whether you want to on the street is up to you. A whole lot of volleyball going on around here. This is a really sweet beach. And I think I can see the wormhole right there. So if you want to find the wormhole, just hike to the north end of Manly Beach and look for the pink heart. Let's go check it out. So I thought that I would give my general take on Sydney. It is an amazing city. It is like perfect, basically. If you can afford it. It is certainly expensive as a tourist and I'm sure to live here as well. I can't imagine what the rent is on these places over here. They must be astronomical, but the wages are better as well. So if you're working here, then of course you can live here. I mean, look at this. And this is far from the only one. There are tons and tons of amazing beaches. Great restaurants, nice, you know, pedestrian zones. This seems like the ultimate city to live in. And then from here, there is so much to see within a drive. Getting into the interior of Australia, other beach towns. I mean, I think so far, from what I've seen, if I had to choose a city to live in, as opposed to a small town or whatever, which would be my preference probably. But if I was going to pick a city, I think Sydney might be it. I mean, not that I'm about to move here. It's certainly very debatable. There are Asian cities that uh, are amazing as well for different reasons and a lot more affordable. But uh, the general vibe is just really, really nice. So. My family is from Los Angeles and then scattered from there to various places. I was actually born in Vancouver, Canada because my parents moved from LA to Vancouver. We lived there for only two years. We moved back to California when I was a year old. We moved back to Los Angeles, my parents and I, for just another year and then moved north and I was raised in a small town in Northern California. So I've never really lived in LA. I don't remember, you know, anything. I was like two years old. But I have passed through LA lots of times and sorry LA, but there is just no comparison between Los Angeles and Sydney other than the beach. But uh, the vibe in LA, in my opinion, is just like, I always just want to get out of there. Sydney has this really relaxed, mellow, chilled out vibe and it just feels a lot better taken care of. So, to me, it's just such another level up from many cities around the world. New York is amazing, but you know, no beaches and it is just a concrete jungle. London is certainly one of the top cities in the world, but uh, you don't have the same access to nature and So I guess the wormhole is over here. Gotta walk along the rocks. So apparently Sydney is the second most expensive city in the world after Hong Kong. Of course, it depends on the year and which uh, source. There are various factors to it, you know, bounces around. Tel Aviv, Israel was voted the most expensive city in the world a couple years ago. And I've been to Tel Aviv as well. Also a nice city, but uh, 
Hong Kong, which I've been to, spent a week there, enjoyed. But I really didn't have the uh, thought while visiting there of, yeah, I could imagine living in this city. Certainly very interesting. Singapore, also. Nice city. But, uh, I think it's the nature element, how active things are here. So much choice of surfing and running and skateboarding and boating, volleyball. And then the uh, exploring to do elsewhere, which I haven't done yet, but I'm very much looking forward to. It just seems like the options here are really like nowhere else. As far as having the, you know, city experience combined with incredible exploring. Okay. What is that? A cathedral or an old hotel? That is the next destination. Gonna head over there from here. But, here we go. The wormhole. Okay, I need to tell you what it is. A wormhole is a speculative connection between space and time as explored by the scientists. These are actually built upon by a lot of imaginative literature around it, which makes it even more mysterious. Dug up in 1908, the Queenscliff Tunnel, or the Manly Wormhole, indeed feels like a passage through the unknown. Perhaps that is why it is called a wormhole. The fishermen who dug it up sure had the best of the Queenscliff rocks and the freshwater beach region connected up easier than clambering up the rocks. On a sunny day, the wormhole towards freshwater offers the best uninterrupted views of the Blue Sea. So here we go. Let's see if we end up in another part of the universe. Pretty cool. And there you go, that is it, the Manly Wormhole. Now let's go see what that thing is all about. So, if you look closely, there are some ears sticking up right there. That is a rabbit. And there are a couple more. And another one. So, I caught a Uber over here for $12 Australian, or about 8 bucks US, and here we are at the, well it says St. Patrick's Seminary, but it is the International College of Management now, turned into a college, and next to it is the Cardinal Ceretti Memorial Chapel, built in 1939, and this is where Nicole Kidman and Keith Urban got married. I just learned that in the uh, Uber ride on the way here. Really beautiful building. Some Latin there. Omnia Omnibus. I'm not sure yet if it's open. It looks like it's probably going to be locked. Yeah, for sure. A national monument erected by public subscription from all parts of Australia in honor of Christ the King under the invocation on St. Patrick as a tribute to the pioneer builders of the church in Australia and in commemoration of the 29th International 
Eucharistia Congress associated with the memory of Cardinal Ceretti. So, there you go. One of the uh, historical buildings of Sydney and a very beautiful one. But uh, there were signs saying that you couldn't go into the parking lot there on the other side, so I'm just going to show it from the outside. I guess maybe I could walk through over here. Let's uh, see. I think that I will refrain from uh, trying to walk in there, but uh, anyway, pretty amazing building. Let's see, is this Cardinal Ceretti? No. This is a graduate, by the looks of it. Endangered bandicoots. Never heard of a bandicoot before. These are not bandicoots. Bandicoots are small marsupials native to Australia and New Guinea that use their front feet to dig for food. It's hard not to like an animal associated with the phrase snout pokes. What does that mean? As bandicoots forage for underground insects and larvae, they leave behind a series of small conical holes. Okay, there's your answer. The holes of the bandicoot are called snout pokes. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, where's a bandicoot? Pretty tame little feller. Look at this thing. Kind of like a cross between a turkey and a peacock or something. Does it flare up its feathers like a peacock or am I being a foolish tourist getting close to a dangerous animal? I don't know, it doesn't look too uh, deadly. So, what is this one? All right, I'll stop bothering it. Here at Darley Road and Vivian Street. So I'm back in the center of Manly. Check out this really cool Thai drinks place. Thai inspired drinks that you can't resist. Super emoji. And they have all these just crazy looking drinks. Lemon tea, Thai guava, Thai mochi bubble, fresh watermelon oolong tea slush, Thai blue coconut milk, crystal lychee passion fruit green tea. Wild. And we have here another church. and the pedestrian zone. St. Matthew's on the Corso. So I guess this is the Corso. There you go, the Corso Manly.
So, I am now at the rocks. Here you can see a classic sort of British style phone booth. And so I thought that a woman was in there talking on the phone, but it's just a photo op. You can see the photographer there. So the rocks is, as you can see, a nightlife area. There are some markets here. It's called the Rocks Markets, which according to Google were closed. I'm not sure if they were open only on the weekends or earlier in the day. It is now after seven in the evening. But uh, I am back downtown. I caught an Uber, as you saw there, that was not cheap. That one was 42 bucks Australian or 28 US. But I didn't want to hassle with uh, taking a bus since it was getting late. Just wanted to get down here. So we drove over the Sydney Harbour Bridge. And so uh, I am getting in the mood for a little something, but just wanted to walk around first. Check out the scene. I'm thinking it's time for another pub experience. So, people have been remarking on, uh, you know, the fact that my meals have been pretty expensive in the past two videos. That is just going to be the prices in a typical, like, nice restaurant, pub, whatever. Okay, Sydney's oldest pub. So, uh, 25 bucks, that is a better deal than where I was last night at least. And we got some music going on. So this is an 1848 draft. Never heard of it, just uh, randomly picked it. 1140 Aussie dollars. Let's give this a try. Very refreshing. Very crisp taste. Kind of a little bit sweet. Pretty good. Thank you. 